is your IBM progressing to the point where liquid tends to flow up into your nasal passages instead of washing your food down? If so, this episode is for you. As you may already know, the topics chosen for this video channel link usually come from inquiries I receive from other IBMers. If I have the experience with the subject, writing and producing a video on that subject is much easier. Whereas if I know absolutely nothing about the subject matter, I will try to research it, not only for my good, but also for my channel's viewers. This episode took me a lot of research. If you have not already subscribed to this channel, please do so, and if you check on the bell, you will be notified whenever a new episode has been published. Now let's dive into this 125th episode on the IB Myositis video channel. Dysphagia can be caused by several different things. When it is caused by inclusion body myositis, it is called myogenic dysphagia. Inclusion body myositis patients with dysphagia or swallowing difficulties can suffer from poor nutrition as well as choking. Aspiration occurs when food or liquid enters the airway, potentially causing pneumonia. Dysphagia may also promote social isolation since many of our personal interactions are centered around meals. Any intervention that improves swallowing function in IBM patients, therefore, has the capacity to significantly improve quality of life and potentially reduce the medical complications and mortality associated with IBM. Some IBMers feel the effects of their dysphagia or difficult swallowing very early in their IBM journey. In fact, it may be one of the first signs of IBM remember. Many don't feel the effects of dysphagia or trouble swallowing until their functional rating scale score is in the third stage or lower than 15. In my specific case, I didn't feel the effects of dysphagia until my FRS score was down to a score of under 10. Any skeletal muscle that is part of the swallowing reaction can be affected by inclusion body myositis, most likely making it slower and throws the whole timing scenario out of whack. If you have any swallowing difficulties at all, you will most likely have heard the term bolus. A bolus can be defined as a small rounded mass of chewed food at the moment of swallowing. The task of swallowing takes a lot of coordination between all the muscles in the mouth and throat area. People who suffer from dysphagia most likely experience increased durations through all phases of swallowing, the oral phase, the pharyngeal phase, and the pharyngoesophageal phase, and the esophageal phase. Many diagnosed with dysphagia will experience problems swallowing even the thinnest of liquids. It is moistened with saliva and chewed into a softer consistency. Once the food bolus has been processed by the mouth, the oral transit stage begins with the tongue raising up against the hard palate while the back of the tongue drops to allow the bolus to move into the back of the mouth. Simultaneously, the soft palate raises up against the back while closing off the passageway into the nose, preventing any food or liquids from regurgitating back up into the nose. The pharyngeal stage is a rapid sequential activity during which the bolus is propelled into the esophagus. The larynx elevates while the epiglottis flips down protecting the airway. Not clearly shown are the pharyngeal muscles which contract squeezing the bolus downward. The cricopharyngeus muscle or upper esophageal sphincter relaxes and opens to allow food and liquids to pass into the esophagus. Once the bolus passes the cricopharyngeus muscle, the esophageal stage begins. 
the cricopharyngeus muscles closes back up to prevent any regurgitation back up into the throat. The esophageal muscles continue to propel the bolus into the stomach by a coordinated muscle contraction and relaxation. There is a common terminology for describing liquid thicknesses to improve safety for those suffering with dysphagia. That organization is the International Dysphagia Diet Standardization Initiative, or IDDSI. Under the IDDSI framework, there are five levels of thicknesses for liquids, starting with level zero, thin, that pours like water. Level one, or slightly thick, is just a little thicker than plain water and can still be consumed by using a straw. Using a straw is important for IV embers, especially in the late stage two or stage three, when lifting a glass or cup may become difficult. Level two is referred to as a mildly thick, or sometimes referred to as having a honey firmness. Level three is called moderately thick, and although it still can be consumed by using a wide bore straw, pulling the liquid up the straw will take more effort. Level four is called extremely thick and cannot be consumed from a cup because it does not flow freely. So, what does a heavier or thicker drink bolus do for us? A thicker bolus helps push the back of the soft palate up to block fluid from getting into the nasal passages. Liquids can go down the wrong throat and occur easily when drinking water to wash down some food. For some, washing food down with a sip of water has worked in the past, and lowering the chin when swallowing has always helped also. But what happens when our IBM no longer sufficiently pushes up the soft palate to help block fluids from going up into our nasal passages. In review, it's evident that IBM does affect the muscles involved in swallowing our food and liquid. IBM can cause the weakening of skeletal swallowing muscles that cause the minimization of movement as well as affects the orchestration of the muscles that need to work together to successfully swallow liquid or food. In part two of the subject, we will dive into some of the thickeners available on the market today, show examples of thickened liquids, and talk about how you can get free thickener sample to try out in your own home. As always, I will place some pertinent sources in the info section of this video episode.